Islamic discourse that is not necessarily friendly to the civil liberties and, uh, 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 and many others. And this brings me to my third point. My third point is that the three different interim governments that ruled the country since January 2011 till now, all of them actually were hostile to the free activism of the civil society, simply. I mean, they didn't, they didn't see the civil society as a possible ally. They didn't see the civil society, especially the human rights organization, as, as a force that they can cooperate with in order to advance a democratic, a democratic agenda. The first interim, interim administration, that was a military administration. A military administration that was actually approved and embraced by the different political forces that initiated the uprising at that time. It was not so problematic at that time. Those guys inherited kind of a legislative framework that's not friendly at all for, uh, for the civil society. We have the law of 1999, this is how we call it, law 1999, and actually it is pretty similar to the clauses that, that my colleague was talking, was talking about. Controlling the funding via the Ministry of Social Solidarity. Ministry of Social Solidarity has to approve any kind of foreign funding from unregistered firm. An unregistered firm, by the way, include USAID, include Ford Foundation, and, and many others. And when you see Minister, Ministry of Social Solidarity approving the funding, this simply means that the state security agency or intelligence service approving the funding. That's it. And we had many, many incidents in the past before the revolution about funding that's being blocked by foreign security reason, and this is by law. And the Ministry of Social Solidarity can block the fund for security circumstances, by the way. Ministry of Social Solidarity, it has the right to dissolve the board of any NGO following, following an audit. And the audit actually happens in a, very arbitrary, in a very arbitrary way. And then sometimes before the constitutional amendment of 2014, the Ministry of Social Solidarity even had the right to dissolve the NGO itself. So after establishing the NGO and having the legal status, this legal status could have been completely cancelled, completely erased by an administrative decision from the Ministry of Social Solidarity based on audit. And definitely these audits are completely arbitrary. So all of a sudden, I mean, you will have an auditor coming from the Ministry of Social Solidarity, you don't know why, and definitely biased. And we had, we had kind of a number of organizations that faced these, 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 uh, these situations, like the Egyptian, the Egyptian Legal Aid Association. That was before, before the revolution. And also, the third, the third character of this, of this legislation is also this blurry, ambiguous definition of the political activity and where to draw the line between the activities of the civil society organization and the activity of the political organization. Again, broadening broadening the term of the political activity to include basically everything. And this gives a leeway for the Ministry of Social Solidarity to intervene and create